a stopper one. No, in this video I want to focus specifically on showing you how to make a desktop application with Python easily. Whether you have heard of it or not, you can actually make desktop applications with Python. Usually some popular packages might include tkinter, which stands for toolkit interface. But you have also something called Qt, whether 5 or 6, is another package you can use to make applications with Python. Now usually the way applications are done, you are here in your window, you program everything, for example you set a button, you have to place it exactly on the window and then you have to run the code, re-change the position if it's not satisfied and then you have to do this and this again and again. There is another convenient tool which is called PyQt Designer, or shortly Qt Designer, applies to Python. Now in this video I want to show you how you can easily use this application right here to build your Python applications. So to just give you a little introduction on what this application can do, for example, you can create a main window, you can add different types of button, you can, for example, here add some sort of layout to your window. You can basically customize your application as much as you want. To be able to use this application, you gotta install it. It is very basic the way the installation is done. Just type on your browser how to install PyQt Designer. Basic as that. You'll have a link, install QD Designer, which I will link in the description, so don't worry about this. It will take you through this page, and then you have here two options, whether you want to use PyQt6 or PyQt5. You might go for PyQt6 since it has a higher number, so you know, <laughs> higher number means good, better, I guess. So you do a pip install PyQt6.tools. Now, let me open my command prompt. Depending on the Python version you have, Say I want to show you the Python versions I actually own, I do py dash dash list. You'll see that I have actually two Python versions. Now let's say you have the Python version 11, 12, whatever plus. Now if I do python dash dash version, you'll see that the default version for me is 3.10. You'll see that it will be relevant in a moment. Let's say that our default version is python 11 or 12. So let's say that I will switch the version by doing pi-3.12 Okay, dash dash version You'll see that now I have the version 3.12.1 which is the, the one I usually work with Now if within this version I want to install this pyqt6.tools package I do a hyphen m and then I say pip install pyqt6 Tools. Whoops, and I made a typo here. It will tell me that this library does not exist because it's tools. There you go. Now, when I run this, you'll see that, okay, it seems that it will be installing, which in a way gives us a good feeling. You no know, installing build dependencies and all. And after a moment, okay, so roughly 20 seconds later, you see we get an error. It says encountered error while generating package metadata. See above for input, and then this is an issue with the package mentioned above, not pip. So the actual problem here is also the one I encountered when I wanted to use PyQt Designer as of recently, is that it does not work for certain Python versions. I think it's above the Python version 3.11 and 12, it doesn't work, but it works for the Python version, let's say, 3.10. Now to resolve this problem, all you gotta do is install the corresponding Python package. So I do Python, simply, and then I go welcome to the Python official website, go on downloads, okay, and then search for let's say 3.10.10, okay, and then you will go on the Windows installer or whatever operating system you have. Okay, so, so basically you will have the Python version 3.10. Okay, so now once I do here Py uh, dash dash list, I should have two Python versions, and if I do Python uh, dash dash version, see you have the version 3.10.10. Now I can go back to what I previously was doing, installing the here PyQt6 tools, so I do Python dash 3.10, let's say I want to install it on the Python version 3.10, then dash m, hit install Py. Qt6 dash tools. Now you'll see we'll go through the process of installation again. Okay, now I had some network issues, but should be fixed now. 
Okay, so now we can see that it is installing everything, uh, the packages and blah blah blah. Eventually, after a couple of minutes or seconds, we will get the following message. Okay, now we can see that it's successfully installed and we didn't get any error. This is because we actually installed it in our Python version 3.10 and not in the Python version 3.12. Okay, so now after doing this, you can simply run this uh, line right here, which I will also provide in the description, so don't worry about this. Let's say I copy and then paste it by doing a right click. By doing this, you'll see that it will run the QD Designer application. Finally. Now, what I usually do, as you can see here, I tend to dock it on my on here on my taskbar. So let me unpin this from the taskbar. Let me do this. You see, I'll have this application right here. I do a right click and I say pin to taskbar. So that even if it's closed, I can just simply click here and it will execute. Okay. Now we have finally Qt Designer installed. And for instance, let's close it again. <laughs> and I wanted to show you a little bit of a motivation for the types of applications you can do with this um, QD designer. So this is actually an application I made during my master thesis, actually. If I go ahead and run this code, we will proceed to the running, which is in French, so we don't worry about this, but it will basically make, it will basically display an application. You can see here that all of this was made using the QD designer. You can, for example, import an STL file, and then, for example, view it like this, view, I don't know, just the, the points, the top, bottom, left, right, easel view and all, and then I can, I can do a lot of things with this actually, I can just see the, the triangles, I can um, see less uh, line stroke, or higher line stroke, I can import another model, for example, and then I can also view it, and then I can to some operations that will not go into too much detail. So all of this to say that this was generated with QD Design, so the application interface. Okay, well, let me close this, and I can go ahead and show you the actual UI of this application by doing here open. You see here, so this was the UI we just saw that was entirely made with this QD Designer application. Okay, now let's say you have installed your QD Designer app, everything is working. How do we use this now? I want to first introduce you how we can make a basic window with PyQD6 if you're completely new to this concept. If you're a little bit more experienced, you can jump. I'll leave time steps in the video so you can know, for example, what we'll be doing. I want to show you how you can make a basic window and then how you can load an existing UI generated from the QD designer that you are going to load in or on your window. How we can add some functionalities and by finishing, a more concrete way to how you should building your applications. Okay, so let's start now with a very basic window generating application. Okay, so just in case you didn't have it already, make sure to also install the PyQD6 uh, package right here. But I think it already gets installed. Yeah, it's already installed for me. Okay, so the first thing I have to do is importing a widget module. So I do from uh, Py qt6 with capital p and capital q i want to import qt widgets this one okay and then from here on i will say if underscore underscore name is equal to main this will check that we are actually running this code right here so this is our main file we're running i gotta import the sys module and I want to create my application by doing app is equal to qt widgets dot q. I think it's called q application. Yeah, q, q application. And I want to specify sys dart r g d. So this means, for example, this will allow our application to deal with with system related operations. For example, creating files, changing files, naming files, and all. I also have here a commented script that we will just see in a moment to explain in further details. After creating our application, we are going to create our main window. So I do window, window is equal to qt widgets dot q, q, main window. Make sure to have here a capital Q, capital A, as well as capital Q, M, and window. I think it's the camel convention. 
where the first letter is in capital and then all the rest is in lower. Now after creating our window, we want to actually show it. So we do window dot show, simply. Okay. And then after doing this, we want to actually execute our application. I can do app dot exec here. If I run this code, you'll see that we get our window. All good now. Additionally, I want to introduce the sys dot exit to it. Now the reason why we want to do this sys.exit is to make sure that we completely and fully quit our application to not have some sort of event loop problem. Or if I run this, you see we have our basic window. Now let's come back to our commented script. So first of all we import the necessary modules from PyQt6. Here QD widgets provides tool for creating window elements like button text boxes and so on. We import the sys module to handle system level operations. We create an application object which is responsible for managing the graphical user interface. And we then create our window, we display it, and then we execute our application. So this is the very basic application you can make with PyQt6. Now let's say we had a UI within PyQt Designer that we want to upload here. What I gotta do is I have to add the UIC module before showing our window. We want to upload using the UIC dot load UI within capital U, and we want to specify our main or our let's call it file UI, which we will generate from QD Designer. And then we want to add this to our window. Now let's run our QD Designer application right here, and let's create a window. Okay, so we have this window. Now you can go ahead and for example add a button right here you have multiple widgets you can use now a widget in its essence is an entity that have a specific function for example the label widget allows you to label some text here and then you have the vertical scroll bar the horizontal slider the vertical slider the all you will discover all of these by learning more and more how to use this QD Designer application. Here I can, for instance, move them all around, but if I want them to be in a grid, in a grid structured manner, I gotta go here, click on this central widget, and I want to have them as a grid layout. So you will see that it generates a grid layout where I can just click on here, select it, and put it right here, okay? And let me put actually the button here. If I double click on the button, I can rename it, say, show, text and I can say text here to show by double clicking again. Now if I want to save this UI I do a control S and then I come to my actual uh, folder which is here PyQuery Designer Tutorial and I name it let's say file simply file. Okay. If I want to view how this application would look like if I run it I do control R and you see I have a look at here right here. Okay, now coming back to our code right here, you see that we have our main file.ui, which is in this, which is right here. Okay, if I run now this main.py, you will see that it actually loaded up the UI that we have right here. If, for example, I come back to my QD designer and add another button right here, I save this, and then I run this code again by closing this window, okay, you'll see that it automatically updated our UI, which makes it very convenient for working with very large applications with, for example, with the one I just showed you. Now let's say I remove this for now. You can see here we have the different widgets we just created, for example, the label, the push button. This is the name of the actual widget, okay, and this is the type of it. Now let's say we want to add a functionality to this button, since if when I run this code, you'll see that nothing happens. And I actually have to save this. Okay, I'm gonna do this again. When I press this button, nothing happens. Let's say I wanna add a functionality to this button. What I gotta do is specify the name of it. So its name is push button. I specify the push button that is found within our window. So I do window dot push button dot collect. And then I will specify a function here that will be called whenever I want to click this button. So I can go back here, say that func button. And for instance, let's say we simply want to print 
Hello world. Okay. Now let me close this and let me rerun this. Uh, okay, so now uh, we have actually an error right here because I forgot to specify that this button, we want to connect it to this function right here. So whenever we click on this button, I want that the clicking event will be connected to this func button. If I run this, you'll see that it run our applications. If I print show text, it will print here in our terminal, hello world. If I can do this multiple times, you see, it works. Now, this is good and all, but a more, let's say, formal way to make your application is actually in a class, as I did right here. So let's actually view this together. Again, we have from PyQD6, import QWidgets and UIC. And then here, instead of doing our main window like we did just right here, we want to make it into a separate class. All of this, called class of main window. And you want to pass in the QD widgets dot Q main window. So it's basically the same thing as here. Okay, we want to initialize our class by loading up the UIC. And I guess we don't need this for now. It's not very necessary. Okay. We again, instead of doing here window dot push button dot click dot connect, we do a self dot push button here. Self refers to the window itself dot push button dot click dot connect and then dot self button on click which will be a function within our window here on click button print button from the UI was clicked and then basically in our main if statement here it's more or less the same thing we import the system we create our application instead of doing here window is equal to q widgets dot q main window we simply do window is equal to main window so we call up this class right here we want to show it and we want to execute our application. So let me actually run all of this and put it right here. Okay, and then let's change this to our file.ui. If I run this, you'll see by clicking this button, it displays the text button from the UI was clicked, which is calling this function right here. If you want to modify here in the QD designer, you can go ahead and modify it. But you can see it is very interactive and it's actually way better to do this way whenever you have like a bigger application you want to make. For example, the one I showed you right here, where you have, for example, multiple windows that each link to another window, and then you have a main application where you want to do all your calculations and computations. Maybe you want to display some objects like here. You have a tab frame, things like that. So you can see it is very handy to use the QD Designer application in order to design your own applications. It makes it so convenient and so easy to use. Okay, I'm back. So, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it was useful to you and you were able to grasp, let's say, the generalities covered in this video. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to leave a like, maybe subscribe if you want to see more of these content. If you want to support the channel, please check out my Udemy course on teaching Python for science and engineering. That being said, thank you very much for watching. I hope to see you on the next video. This has been Eunice, and hope to see you soon. Peace.